Thank you, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Whoa, as I look around this room, I see so many intelligent people, so many highly educated people, so many people with, with big dreams and, and big accomplishments. And because we're all so highly intelligent here, I do realize that we're very smart people, and you all know that we're not going to live forever. Am I right? Yeah. So we have to use our time wisely. Am I right? So when you look back on 2010, you might think, oh, okay, well, I look back and I'm thinking about the parties and the friends and maybe the movies that came out and the socializing that I did, and that's all well and good. But when you look back at 2010, I have an honest question for you, too. How much of that time did you spend perhaps lamenting over school or stressing over exams? or trying to get over hard breakups, or planning for your future, and replanning, replanning for your future. How much of your time was spent with those stressful moments? Too much. Yeah, too much. So I'm here to talk today about making every moment count. And when I look back at 2010, unfortunately, all those good moments were great, but then some of the smaller moments, when I added them all together, they became my big moments of 2010, and I wasted way too much time on them. So I'm going to just go over with you today two moments that, or I'm sorry, two bad habits of mine for 2010. And my first one was comparing myself with others. Does anyone else here do that? Compare yourself with others? I know, and it, it's horrible. So I'm going to tell you that when I was a theater major, and being a theater major and an actress, it's very normal for you to be compared to someone else. And you're always waiting to audition, and you're waiting in line, and there's a pretty girl here, and a pretty girl here, and a pretty girl here, and you know, you go in and audition, and I know I do my audition, and why did I get it? I don't know, maybe because I'm wearing a white shirt today. It doesn't matter. It's just weird sometimes. So you're always comparing yourself to someone else. So I grew up with that, and so now that I work at English Village, I tend to compare myself to people at work. And the most times I do this is when they leave. I think, oh, where are they going to? What job did they get next? Are they going to Argentina to do ESL theater? How oh, cool, I want to do that. Are they going to Italy to do ESL theater? Man, that's so exciting. Are they going to go work on a cruise ship? Are they going to dance in Dubai? And these are all true stories. And they leave and I think, wow, my life is so boring. So, I need to stop that in 2010, no more comparing myself to others. Because you know what we do? We compare certain traits to other people. And we don't compare the whole package. So when you really compare the entire package, everything that you should be looking at, you'll realize that when you compare, it's not such an equal comparison as you thought. There's no thing that says that you take all your problems and throw them into the middle of the room. Once you look at everyone else's problems, you'll want to take your strength. And that's kind of how I feel about comparison. It's just not worth it. You just rather take yourself back. My second big uh, bad habit of 2010 was spending too much time thinking about regrets. Does anyone else do that? Yes. Anyone have regrets? Yes. Yeah, I know. Regrets, they're a bummer. Now, there's a saying that says that would you rather regret something that you have done or have not done? Now let's think about that for a second. Have you asked, have, would you rather regret something that you have done? Raise your hand if you're in that camp. If you'd rather regret something that you have done. Ooh, a few people, not that many. How about those people who would rather regret something they have not done? Okay, we're a little divided. I actually believe in regretting something that you have done. I feel like I wouldn't be standing up here in front of you today if I hadn't taken a leap of faith and done a few things in my life that I regret. For example, I was a theater major, which I don't regret. I moved to Florida, I don't regret. I got engaged while I was in Florida, I regret that. <laughs> but I learned a few things from it. I moved to Korea, I met a guy, I regret that relationship. <laughs> However, at the end of that relationship, I decided that I needed to do something to make myself feel better. So I looked in Group Magazine and I came across an ad for Toastmasters. And so I decided to make new friends, join a public speaking group, and here I am. So there you go. Regrets. Oh, <laughs> so 
uh, there's a book called Who Moved My Cheese? Does anyone know that book? Yeah, and Who Moved My Cheese? It talks about change. And it also talks about how you can address something without fear. So what would you do if you were not afraid? What would you do if you, if you had no fear? And so that's my new motto, to look at everything in that light. What would I do if, if failure was not an option, an option, if I had no fear? And so I'm going to live by that book, Who Moved My Cheese. Now, I don't know if this has inspired you yet. Basically, I've just been talking about me. But hopefully, as we've been going along, you can address and identify certain things that maybe you have spent too much time on in 2010 and that you want to change for 2011. I have decided that because the new year is almost among us, that I was going to go out and start early with my New Year's resolutions. So I went out and I decided I was not going to think about the past, I wasn't going to think about regrets, I wasn't going to stress over anything. And what do you know, but I met this guy. I know, I know. At Starbucks. No, not at Starbucks, but you know, I met him at Platters. Do you guys know Platters? Yeah. So I met him at Platters, and he's this really, really hot guy. And he's got these great eyes. Is anyone an eye person? Like, love eyes, ooh, like nice eyes, yeah? Uh, what about hair? Like, putting your hand through their hair? No one wants to admit that? Okay. Well, anyway, I met this cute, cute guy, and I thought that the best way for me to describe my new relationship for you was through a song. So hold on, because I'm going to sing to you about how I was inspired to meet my new guy. His eyes, he's got such beautiful eyes. They're all smoky brown, or misty blue, or well, they have flare, and so does his hair. It was a golden blonde or velvet black, or something totally cute like that. But the point here is, I forgot his name. <laughs>